And welcome to another edition of the Raw Shock Test Podcast. I am your host, Terrell James. Today, I got a very special guest, my man, Southside on Murder. What's up, bro? What it do, bro? How are you? I'm good, man. I've been looking forward to this. Hell yes, man. We've We've been talking about trying to get this interview done for some months now, and we finally doing it. But it's been on me, though. It's been on me. (laughs) (laughs) My man, go take that. The alpha, please. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> right, but what's going on, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I'm uh I'm alive. That's I'm good. alive, man. I'm staying on the way, man. I ain't in nobody's way out here. That's, <laughs> That's, <all right. laughs> That's good, man. All right, so look, what we do here for the Raw Shock Test podcast, I'm gonna put up a series of Raw Shock tests or ink block tests, and um uh, you know, I asked my guests what they see. So what I've done is I've already sent him three pictures. He told me what it is that he sees. And I have my notes here, the way a therapist does. You all who watch the show, you know, I'm in therapist mode. I got my pad. I got my pen. So I'm in therapist mode here. And I am going to uh, be referring to my notes and then asking questions based off of the things that he does, his passions and uh, and, and the notes that I have here and based off of what he saw on the Raw Shock test. So, but before we even get into all of that, let's run down the things that you do and the things that are passions for you. So let's first start with the music. So how long have you been rapping? I've been rapping for like, like <laughs> six, seven years now, something like that. Okay. About six, seven years now, yeah. Okay, all right. And then the other thing is, you said you in the art, so you draw. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that though. Right. Like, people don't know that about and me. And I had no I idea. All this yeah. time, I had no idea. Yeah, like I know how to draw. Like I like that. Only thing about me drawing, like, I had a hard time with, is like mm-hmm. shading. Okay. Shading. That's the only thing for real. But I can draw like a motherfucker. Really? I can draw. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. man>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that always that like been a little passion of mine, man. Right uh uh-huh. uh talent anyway you know what i'm saying a little sneaky talent of mine mm-hmm. yeah okay mm-hmm. and then uh you said boxing boxing is a passion boxing. yeah boxing too man uh it's so crazy because like i never like i never technically boxed i never like officially boxed and got in the ring and like had a, a fight mm-hmm. or none of that but i just always had old heads that just just like took me under the wing and just showed me the ropes like boxing and shit. yeah so it was just like I know how to fight, but it's just like <laughs> my hands ain't registered or nothing. So can't nobody. If I whoop a nigga, he can't. He can't. You know what I'm saying? Do nothing he about it. No hit no, oh man, he a boxer. Nah, nah. I just know how to fight, cool. I just know how to fight like a motherfucker. That's it. <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny? So you know when I I became a, um a boxing coach. When I became a boxing coach, one of the questions I had for them, I said, Yo, do I have to get my hands registered? And they said, do you plan on going pro and getting in the ring and fighting? I said, nah, not at this point. I'm good. I ain't going gonna, gonna to do it. They said, no, you ain't got to get your hands registered. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? No, nah, for real. I just want to learn. I just want to teach me the techniques. You know what I mean? Right. I ain't trying to do all that. I ain't really trying to go pro or none of that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, honestly, what stopped me from, like, really pursuing boxing for real is, like, man, I, I was told this. This is when I was young, though. You know, I'm young. I'm like, man, I was told, man, you can't have sex. I was about to say, I already know what you're about to say. He's like, man, you can't have sex. Like, but he ain't worded like you can't have sex before a fight. He was just like, you just can't have sex. And I'm like, what? Like, Mike Tyson ain't had sex for like five years. I'm like, oh, hell no, nah, bro. <laughs> and then, then I was smoking too much. I was smoking Jack back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I'm smoking Jack back then. I had weed. So I'm like, yeah, that ain't that my little wind going to get me knocked the fuck out. Like, I'm all right. I'm good. My defense is impeccable. All yeah. is good. Great, yeah. but it's just like little but win. You, ain't, ain't, ain't yeah, your block. longevity. <laughs> for real, <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah, and I, and I just kept getting in trouble and shit. Like you know what I'm saying? I just kept mm-hmm. getting in trouble, getting locked up and shit, and little young and shit, little dumb shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's something else that I, I know is a passion for you is uh GD. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the religion. Yeah. That's like the best of religion. You hear me? I don't even. We 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 the old gay. We the organization, but man, that's 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 life. You know what I'm saying? That's like mm-hmm. that's like the Bible. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Like Christians, really like 
I mean, I don't, I don't see, you know, like even though, even though the media and the government or whatever portrays whatever negativity and all that, like me personally, I never saw that before I even, you know, what I'm saying before I became GD, and you know, what I'm saying like I, I did my research because I, I didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. but to me, from my research that I did, to me, it looked like the Black Panther. Yeah. The new Black Panthers to me, that's what it looked like. So I was, you know, I was intrigued by it. I was always like a revolutionary. I was always like that. Like always mm -hmm. wore black. Always with the black fist. You know what I'm saying? I was always mm -hmm. like that. Right. So I was just like, man, that's the perfect fit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I just wanted a brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted a connection to my to my people, to my folks. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that, you know, and yeah, that's I'm definitely a passion of, you know what I'm saying, passion of mine, man. I definitely mm -hmm. take that very serious because, right. like I say, that's like, that's like a religion, bro. Yeah, Nobody so, and, and for those that don't know what, what I'm talking about when I say GD is uh, Gangster Disciples. Now, we're going to get into that a little later because I would like to clear up some misconceptions that people have about GD. Not just GD, but gangs in general. So, right. we're going to clear up some things, too, but we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that a little later, but um uh, we're gonna uh, go growth, ahead growth and development, my bad growth and development growth and we're development. Gonna call it that yeah okay, yeah, that's that. that. okay i like yeah, that yeah, growth <laughs> and yeah. that's what the gd stands for people growth, uh -huh. and, development. growth and development and 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 exactly you know what when we talk about it that's exactly what we're going to talk about the growth and development yep so yeah. all right so i'm gonna put up one of these so i already sent you this picture this one right mm -hmm. here. So this one, you said you saw a Mardi Gras mask, right? Yeah. Okay. So with that Mardi Gras mask, let me <clears throat> get back to my notes. Now, with the Mardi Gras mask, it was actually created. Um, it was a tradition during the early carnivals, when they were doing the carnivals, right? And um, it was actually created so that people of a certain class or a certain reputation they could mingle outside of their class without their reputation being tarnished right that was that was the original meaning there right so okay, yeah. i want you to tell me this <clears throat> how many times have you been like outside of your class outside of your environment but you did you ever feel, well first of all, i'm going i'm not going to say how many times i'm sure it's been a lot of times but the times that it has happened have you felt that you needed to put a mask on to really cover exactly who you are to make everybody else in the room feel comfortable or did you look i already know the answer to this question but i'm just gonna ask it anyway <laughs> or did you or did you like man forget this mask i ain't worried about this mask y'all get yeah i mean it's definitely times where i, where I was like man fuck this man i'm gonna be me you yeah. know what i'm saying whoever don't like it but you don't like it you know but it's definitely times i would say more times that i have wore that mask and, and you know you know try to not really you know expose the real me i guess uh you know i don't know i say like uh kevin gates when he say he an introvert but it, but it come off as aggression you feel what i'm saying like i yeah. like a lot of people uh I don't know, man. They judge me. They judge the book. They judge the book right. and shit. You know what I'm saying? They see me and they, I guess a lot of people see me and they just think I'm a robber or something. Right. And I be like, you know what I'm saying? So it'd be like, you know what I'm saying? Me taking that mask so off is more so like, man, man, you know, like, man, hey, I'm smarter than what I look like, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not the person you think I am. You know what I'm saying? Shit like right. that. But yeah, so I've been in, I've been in situations like that, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely that yeah how do you handle it i mean that, well first let me ask you this do you even care about making people feel uncomfortable because and, and the reason so what i'm saying is if you're being you you have no reason to apologize for being who you are nah for real so yeah. if it makes other people feel uncomfortable then so be it yeah you know is that okay. how you feel about that perfect example uh me dumbing myself down around people right feel what i'm saying like mm -hmm. that's the time where i take other people uh feelings in, into consideration you know because like, people be like oh nobody know nobody likes to know it on or whatever whatever 
but it's like I don't know everything. I just speak on I just speak only on things that I know. Right. So it might seem like I know everything, but how mm-hmm. I handle it. I mean, if I'm if I'm on if I'm on if I'm on a time where I'm like man fuck that shit, man, I'm gonna be me. Hey man, I'm gonna just be me, man. I ain't dumbing myself down around nobody. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, I don't know. I always been told I don't need. To, I don't. I shouldn't do that. Why should I dumb myself down? Anybody, right. You feel me? Exactly. Be me, you know what I'm saying? I'm smart as a motherfucker, but I feel like around certain individuals, I can't have certain conversations. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I can't talk like this around certain certain individuals because they don't feel like I'm belittling them and being mm-hmm. condescending. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So I mean, me, I just step off. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just step off, and you either you gonna see me or I gonna step off. Like it depends on how the situation goes. Right. <laughs> you know like, yeah. That's how I do it. <laughs> really? I got you. <laughs> so, all right. So the other thing about that 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 uh that Mardi Gras mask, man, is they're very colorful. The Mardi Gras mask, they're very very colorful. So let's talk about art. And you know, as far as you drawing and, and creating with art, so, but I want to, I want to talk about art, but I want to go a little deep with this. So with art, you know, you have to be very, very detailed, uh, especially in your illustrations. Yeah. And to do that, it takes imagination. Right. So let's go back to your childhood. Okay what kind of imagination did you have as a child and did you have to use that imagination to escape a harsh reality yeah uh my imagination as a child hmm. i mean i daydream a lot right mm-hmm. so i'm always imagining things uh i don't know man me just imagining uh not being in the trenches where i was <laughs> something like you know what i'm saying like me just imagine having food when i have food i don't know like i don't know bro it, 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 ah. repeat the question for me one more time bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, let me bro. see if i can let me see if i can reword it um so as a kid, as yeah. a kid you had to have this imagination did you start drawing when you were a kid yeah i did okay so when you were drawing and you were let's say were you did you find yourself like creating like different worlds to try to escape the reality that you had to deal with at that moment uh with drawing yeah no nah, it, it was more so uh i do people like self-portraits or like people and stuff uh i never was really uh i wasn't really that artistic like where i you know where I, was, I mean if anything i would daydream into mm-hmm. a different world or something. I had to be zoned out in a whole other world. If anything, but uh-huh. yeah, nah, for the most part, when I drew, I, it, it was like, I just draw what I see. Like, I see a car and I draw that. Mm-hmm. I see like, a, you know what I'm saying? I see like a, a person, just one of my cousins just sitting in the chair for, for hours. I draw that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Something like right. that. That's what it was. Okay. So what was it? Um, how was your childhood? My childhood, man, it was, uh, uh, I mean, it was, it was rough. Like, you ever seen the movie Baby Ace Kid? <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> that was me, man, Lil Pee Wee, man. Y'all got a piece of man don't come by here no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's, that's, that, like, that's, that's the perfect representation. I can say for real, yeah. Like baby kid, you know what I'm saying? Mother died early, man. Father, you know, he's in another system. Mm-hmm. So it's like, man, uh, house to house for real. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, in the system, foster kid, different foster parents, you know what I'm saying? Then finally got adopted. Right. Finally got adopted by grandma now, you know what I'm saying? And, but it was like, even when we got adopted, we were still split up. Cause all of us wasn't together. They kept me and my twin together, but they, t- they, you know, they separated us from our sisters. Mm-hmm. And our sisters went with somebody that swore she was our mother's sister, but our mother was the only girl. So that's mm. what's up. <laughs> right. But yeah. I mean, you know, my my upbringing was uh, I can say, you know, I can say, uh, yeah, we struggled. I can say uh, it was tough. It definitely yeah. was rough. 
It's a lot of pain. Definitely, uh, traumatizing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pain. It's definitely traumatizing. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people still got their parents to this day. You feel me? So right. Yeah. You know, leave so, your mother that early. Do something. To right. Okay. So with that being said, now let's go back to that imagination that you had. Yeah. When, when you were drawing, were you trying to? kind of block out the harsh realities, all the things that you were dealing with, all that pain. Was that your way of escaping as you were drawing? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely my way of escaping. That's definitely my way of escaping. Mm-hmm. You know, something that I can do that can occupy my mind. Anything that can occupy my mind, like even playing a game, mm-hmm. playing Madden or something like that. You know, right. like anything I can do for hours that'll take my mind off whatever was bothering me. Right. So yeah, drawing definitely was one of them. That mm-hmm. definitely was one of them, yeah. 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 And that, that's good, man. You know, in certain ways, it could have helped save your life because, you know, when you are dealing with those types of environments or those types of circumstances um, and you, you're looking for a way out, you know, sometimes you don't always choose the best route. You know, you could have you could have very well gone out and did something that could have gotten you killed or, you know, locked up for a long time, you know, but those times that you were sitting down drawing. It was time that you wasn't out doing something that could have ended badly. Exactly. You know, exactly. so so that's why, man, I love I love looking at kids that are artistic or that are just into these types of things because they're sitting there and they're doing something with their mind. That mind is working. That mind is working exactly. and they're creating, you know. And I, I love I love creators, period. But I love seeing when kids start creating. Yeah. I love exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, and I like highly encourage that. Every time I see a kid that that looks like they want to create or they are creating, man, I encourage it. I push it. Like, keep that going. Keep going. We need more creators. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) creators. Not yeah, not followers. Creators. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I hear a bunch of birds out there where you are. So because of that, we're gonna go to this picture, and in this picture. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in this picture you said you saw a bunch of birds <laughs> I see the birds man birds 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 man it's a bunch of birds man <laughs> <laughs> so so when you um when i think of birds i think about freedom just just watching them just fly and i um i was telling you you know i live out here on the eastern shore now man i got i can just bird watch out my backyard i sit back here and i see uh cardinals blue jays robins um woodpeckers yeah i see species out there i know man (laughs) (laughs) but it's so peaceful but then there's this sense of freedom just watching them just fly and just do what they want and you know just you know so that's the first thing that comes to my mind when i think about birds um but i want to talk about music and i want to talk about freedom Okay. So, how important is it for you to just maintain your creative freedom when it comes to making music? And um, actually, this is a two-part question. Also, if there was a record label that came to you and said, "Hey, uh, we want to give you this incredible record deal, but you have to allow us to have creative control over your music," would you do that? Look, I'm asking questions I know the answer to, but I'm just right, going, right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no question, no question. <laughs> but but okay, let, let's answer the first part of that question first. So, how important is that freedom to you when you're making your music? Man, freedom is oh, freedom is highly important. It's paramount. I'm gonna use that word. Yeah, the freedom is paramount, bro. Because you got like an artist that's actually mainstream. Like look at Lil Uzi Vert. It got to the point where like niggas like man, when your album coming out, he like man, I don't know, I don't know, cause he just mm-hmm. don't have, you know what I'm saying, or or artists that can't put music out because they don't have that freedom to do so. Right. Like me personally, bro, the shit I talk about, bro, I'm pretty sure niggas gonna be like, bro, you can't put that out. <laughs> and not even just because I'm I'm like being hot or nothing, like, I'm just like like bro, I be talking about. I be talking about them white folks, and you know what I'm saying. I don't mm-hmm. just talk about, I just I don't just try to keep it. Talking about niggas, niggas, niggas. Nah, I be, we talking about everybody, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. We talking about everybody, like how they do, how we do, all that. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, man, that's that's very important. And, but if a label is coming to me, I mean, me personally, bro, I ain't. 
you know, I'd have been jumping on the bandwagon on that. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't with that. Uh, I ain't with that shit in the industry, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather stay. I'd rather stay solid and underground, like uh, like Boosie or something like that, or like Tech Nine or one of those niggas. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they solid, but everybody know them. Yeah. They just underground. They ain't. They ain't. They ain't with that shit, bro. I ain't trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't going to no man for party, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get it. Bro. That that's the that's the reason I never signed the deal. For real, I, bro. I had opportunities. I had yeah, stuff bro. on the table. Would not do it for that reason. You a man first, bro. You know, man time over here, bro. You ain't no one knows. You trying to come up and bro, it's too much of that, bro. It's mm-hmm. gonna, bro. It's gonna yeah. take my literally my life to pay you back a million dollars. Too many. It's gonna take my life, bro. That's what the end. That's literally what that is. Exactly. Got my soul home. Yeah. It's gonna take forever for me to pay that shit back. Right. Right. <laughs> I know the rules. I know the game, bro. That's why. Mm-hmm. I, that's why it took took me taking me so long. I ain't, bro. I ain't, nah, mm-hmm. bro, I ain't. I ain't pressed. I ain't geeked up, bro. Right. I ain't geeked up. I, I, I'd rather be solid over the money. Right. Yep. Really. And and that's how I feel, man. Somebody, somebody actually said to me. They asked me one time. They said, "Are you making music?" to make money or are you making music to make music the way you want to make music and i said i'm making music to make music the way i want to make music and i would love to make money doing exactly. it that way right <laughs> right you know? like come on home, like perfect example j cole bro mm-hmm. perfect he, example. His, his 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 bro his style is his style bro he talk woke shit bro you don't got yeah. so many niggas out here talking woke shit that mainstream right he's over here talking about perks and shit Mm-hmm. <laughs> they talking about right. overdosing on drugs and shit. He the only niggas for real. Him and Kenny, only mm-hmm. ones really on that black power revolutionary shit. And they shit, and they the goats. You feel right. what I'm saying? They talk mm-hmm. about what they want. Talk about native goats. I'm trying to be there. I'm right. trying to do that. Nipsey, Nipsey. Yeah. The number one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Never talking about what he want. Talking about it did what he did. Like, you know what I'm saying? They the ones I was watching. They the ones I'm watching. And you know, Nipsey, I was watching Nipsey. Right. And yeah. I rather, but I ain't, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't really starstruck and shit. Like even with, even with celebrities, bro, I've, I've been around, or had a chance mm-hmm. to be around, but I ain't, you know, I'm on mad time, bro. You a regular nigga like me? Like I ain't, ain't no hate or nothing, right? It's just like, bro, I ain't, I'm not, that ain't me, I'm right? Gonna, you know, I you get it. I, yeah. like, you ain't, I ain't put nobody over top of me, bro. Like we even, right? You know what I'm saying? We, I ain't <laughs> yeah. put nobody over top of me or under me, like we right. Even. Let out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And and that's respectable. I mean, people gotta respect that. Yeah. And if they don't, then it, that shows that that shows their insecurities. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So. Yeah, man. I, um. But yeah, I, I knew that was gonna be your answer. I just. You know, <laughs> no. Just asked anyway. <laughs> yeah, give you a million dollars. Just sign your life away. Like. Oh, yeah. Man. No, nah, it ain't worth it, man. And that, you know what, man? I was also asked. They said, "Why aren't you willing to do what they want you to do until you get put on, and then after you get put on, you do what you want to do?" I said, "Cause I gotta look myself in the mirror. That's why." Exactly, bro. People you know? kill themselves behind shit like that, bro. Not yeah. being able to look at themselves in the mirror, bro. I ain't right. trying to be one of them, bro. I heard the only person to ever. That did it the right way like that. Like how you just said, <laughs> the only person did it like that was uh Frank Ocean, bro. Mm. I heard he did what he did. He bought it. He he got he got his advance. Did a sneaky yeah. album or something like that. He did some shit like finesse, bro. I bought it so much with Conjure. Like, but that's rare, bro. How many yeah. niggas doing that, bro? Like, right. <laughs> you gotta know what you know, and you gotta have some bag, like, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have a bag, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I'd rather had a bag, like, look, like. I brother had a bag like I Dolph. Dolph already had his bag. That's why Dolph ain't really need all that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, That's why he was so respected, man. Exactly. It's a difference yeah. between a, a getting signed and the distribution deal. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like dudes on the other you know side, distribution is something different than looking at. Well, you know, that's mm-hmm. another topic. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs>